get started with the software. What I like to do when I'm doing my designs is I like to tweak them a little bit. And I'm going to walk through briefly how I do it. All right. Now, this is in Brilliant software that I'm using. And I brought up the design right here. I'm going to click to highlight it. And I want to enlarge it. So the quickest way for me to enlarge is right over here. It's going to be fit to hoop. So I'm going to click on that. And now it's fit to hoop. Now, let's go back a little bit. Pretend I didn't bring this up yet. I need to choose a hoop. So over here, I'm going to go to preferences. Once the preferences come up, I'm going to choose my format. Since I'm doing this on a brother machine or a baby lock machine, I'm going to choose PES. That's the language that brother and baby lock machines um, speak. Okay, Every sewing machine has their own language. For example, if I click this down, you've got HUS, which is Husqvarna Viking. You have Jeff, which is uh, Janome. Uh, DST, I believe, is what Bernina reads. And Triple X is um, Singer. So, and all these other ones, So is a small version of, I believe, that was the original Janome uh, previous language. Anyway, what I want is PES. Now, when you buy your machines, they will tell you at the dealer what language they are. Or you can go to the website and read information about the embroidery. They'll, they will teach you. All right. Then I'm going to choose a hoop. I've got to choose a hoop. So I'm going to be sewing a pillow. And I want the, the, the hoop size to be an 8 by 8 inch. So I just clicked on 8 by 8 inch. And then I'm going to put apply. And then OK. Now, click on it again. Now, I want to clean this up or change the density for the type of material that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to click this little arrow right here. This, I'm sorry, this question mark. All right, now, here is where it's going to give me a choice of what type of fabric. Well, I'm sewing on a denim, but it's a stretched denim. So I can leave it on cotton poly. Or let's see what we have under denim here. Let me look here. Am I missing the denim? There's canvas. So canvas might be the same as a denim. But I don't see denim on here. So I could choose canvas or poly cotton. I think I'm going to choose a cotton poly. Cotton poly, I think, is what I'm going to use. Yeah, so let me choose the, I'll choose the cotton poly. Then it's asking me the fabric thickness. So is the fabric thickness light, medium, heavy? I'm going to go with medium. And does the fabric have stretch? Yes, it does. It has some stretch to it. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to right. I'm going to hit set project. There we go. Voila. So the density has been set for me for the type of fabric that I'm sewing on. Do you know sometimes when people say, oh, look at all the puckers I have and this and that. Well, density plays a big role on top of the proper um, type of stabilizing that you use. Now, Laurel Birch is all about color, right? And I'm all about, I love color, but I don't want to sit here changing threads all the time. And if I do, well, you know, I'd like to reduce the amount of threads. Now, this one's not too bad. This design is not too bad. It's not going to take up a lot of color. But there's a couple things I want to tweak on here. So the first color is white, which I'm going to leave. The second color is carmine, which I'm going to leave. Purple, blue, lime green. I'm going to leave all these colors here. Then we get to pumpkin. Well, what I like to do, uh, pumpkin, let's see what pumpkin is. Uh, that's okay. But the orange part, I think I'll make the orange part harvest gold because I like using gold metallic thread. You see how that changed? See how that changed? I'm going to do OK. So now instead of pumpkin and orange, I've got pumpkin and harvest gold because I like to use a lot of metallic thread. All right. Then we're going to get down here and there's a seafoam green color and then there's a white. 
Well, I know. Well, maybe or do I know? How do I know which one's really going to which? Well, you've got over here on the top right here, it tells you a breakdown, but I got something easier to show you. Over at the middle at the top here is a little needle and thread. Click that on. Now, this is a bar you can drag across, and it's going to show you the stitch outs, where the, where the colors and order are going to go. So there's that, there's that pumpkin color it's stitching right now. And here's the harvest gold, the metallic, right? All right, now that sea foam that we saw earlier, where's that? Where's that go? Oh, that goes as the base, the base of the moon. And then it wants to do white over it. I don't want white. I want my. I want silver metallic. So down here on the bottom right, you can see my arrow is where it says white. I'm going to click that white, and I'm going to look for silver. Here we go, silver. And click OK. Now, because I clicked that silver, look, it even changed the outline here around the face. You see that? And then, where is this russet, this russet brown? Where does that russet brown go? Let's look here. Where is the russet brown? Ah, oh, the russet brown goes in there. So should we keep it russet brown, or what if I just do it in black like the bottom black? Let's change that. Let's change this to black. Black. Oh, I kind of like that better. Now there's two blacks there, right? All right. Now, we need to reduce the color sort. We want instead of two blacks, we want it to show one black. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to highlight this. And then right up here, you see my... Right here, top left here under help, it says color sort. So I'm going to tap on color sort. It says the, the design page has been sorted but not reduced. Hmm, I wonder why. So let me click a new, view new. All right, tap that. Open the bottom right here, tap color, and let's see if it's been, it has. So instead of two different blacks, it's only got one black, it'll stitch it all at the same time. So I did reduce the color sort by one okay now I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna take it over to my embroider machine and embroider this out all right isn't that fun that's how easy it was that's how easy it was this is in brilliance okay all right okay everybody let's get started all right so if you had joined me in my last video I did hooping to show you how to hoop well we're gonna do the same thing today and what I've got as my base is the Sulky, uh, this is called Sticky Plus, Sulky Sticky Plus. And it is a self-sticking stabilizer. Now take some notes guys, because i got some important information for you. This alone on some fabrics will be too sticky. So this works in conjunction with totally stable. So get here. Totally stable. Works in conjunction with totally stable. Okay? Totally stable gets fused onto the back of your fabric. And make sure that when you iron this, you're ironing and fusing it. Hold this down for quite a while and move it around so it really adheres to this fabric. Now this sticky side, the sticky side is up. And how do you know what the sticky side is up is the printed side. So this is hooped. Now, before I go any further, I have another trick I want to show you. I was at the dollar store and I got these. These. I had told you to use an eraser head earlier, which I have used in all my hoops. But when they get old, the eraser heads dry out just like a pencil. If you look at the pencils, the eraser heads dried out. This is kind of like a plastic rubbery. Cut this in half, cut in half and put it over your screw on your hoop and you can really grip your hoop now and you probably won't even need a screwdriver. They come in a package like this. This is from the dollar store. That's what it looks like. The Dollar General store. I'm sure they all got it. Anyway, I want to share that little tip with you because it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference, especially if you don't have a good grip, or if you're getting older and you got arthritis. This really, really helps. All right, so let me get back to this. Let me grab a pin here, and let me score this. 
And another tip for scoring, which I didn't show you last time, is score all the way around the hoop. Now I'm using an eight by eight hoop. I did a five by seven hoop I just embroidered on. I'll show you after all this is done. When I'm done embroidering, I'll show you the five by seven. The five by seven I did on cotton fabric, on quilting cotton fabric. This one is being done on a stretched, slightly stretched denim. And I thought, well, let's try a couple different fabrics, you know? All right, here we go. And see what uh, how it comes out. So I love the little birch designs. I absolutely do. And um, I had gotten them a long time ago. And then I went online a while ago and ordered some more. And how did I find them? Well, what do I say to always do, guys? I did a Google search. I went to Google. And in the search line of Google, now remember, I didn't go to Bing. I didn't go to any other search website. I go to Google website. And I entered Laurel Birch Embroidery Designs. And then when it came up, it showed me the different places that I could order, download her designs from. You pay a fee, and you download it, and then you own it, and you can sew it out at home. So that's what I did, and that's how you can find it. I love Google. I Google everything. Everything. All right, so now I'm just going to place this in. This is the... Um, this is the denim. This is like a stretch denim. Okay, so here's a tip. Fold it in half and fold it in half again so you have four, four quadrants. And you've got your center piece here, your center section. Line it up with the top mark on the hoop and the bottom mark of the hoop. And just lay it in there. Then you have the side hoop. You have the side markings. So you line up the fold lines with the top, the bottom, and the sides. And then you stick this down stick it down now it's in place it's perfectly in place press it firmly and you're ready to take to the sewing machine and embroider this out see it's stuck in there you don't need to do any more spray basting it's got just enough stick in there you see and the advantage like I said the advantage it's doing your totally stable on the back of your fabric is when you stick this to the, the sticky plus after you're done embroidering this will peel away and the sticky plus will not be stuck to your fabric because there are some fabrics where the sticky plus is way too strong for it and I just use both of them for all my fabrics and it gives better stabilization now speaking of more stabilization if you're going to be using those designs like the Laurel Birch designs that are really have a heavy buildup of thread even though you in your density program on your software that you selected the type of fabric you're going to be sewing you still need more more stabilizer than just these two pieces I have two I full this this is lightweight tearaway stabilizer when this goes in the embroidery machine I'm going to set this underneath to give it extra firm support and then you won't get any puckers at all I see a lot of people writing on the group saying, you know, and showing pictures that their fabrics are puckering. I'm telling you, if you follow this formula, everybody, you will have success with quilting cotton like this. You will have success with denim. You'll have success with everything. And you're going to use the appropriate size needle. I'm going to use a size 14 um, embroidery needle. Uh, then I thought, oh, wait a minute, what, do I want to add metallic thread? Yeah, I want to add some metallic thread. So I'm going to use a 16 top stitch needle for this because I'm doing... Um, metallic thread and because this is a little firmer fabric with all the stabilization I'm going to do a size 16 top stitch needle when I do this all right so let's review again totally stable fuse to the back of your fabric and make sure you really iron it on so it sticks okay because sometimes if you don't do it it'll separate for you and won't do you any good then this gets sticked down to the sticky plus by sulky which is a, st a sticky back and you hoop, you hoop the sticky back, and you're going to just float your fabric on top and press it down. And then for extra support, with the going to use either a medium weight tearaway, and if you don't, just use two layers of lightweight tearaway. And that's going to go underneath the hoop after you put the hoop in the machine to float underneath. Okay? All right, let's go to the machine. All right, before we head over to the machine, I wanted to show you some new supplies that I got. First of all, 
Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful neon colors with sulky thread. Gorgeous. This is Sulky's new polyester. It's called Polydeco. Now, for years, um, all Sulky had was rayon thread and metallic thread. And now they have Polydeco, it's called. It's a polyester embroidery thread. And I cannot wait to use this. This is going to be wonderful. It's got great shine. And it'll be a lot stronger than rayon. Um, so for all you that do a lot of heavy embroidery where any type of rayon thread will break on you, um, polyester is a lot stronger for you. So I'm glad they got that. And then, you know, I've been a big fan of the metallic thread forever. And they got a new logo for the metallic thread. And it's beautiful shiny. Look how shiny that is. Okay, so rule of thumb, everybody. When you're using metallic threads, use a top stitch needle, size 9014 or size 16. Do a 14 or a size 16. And uh, you can also use a metallic needle, but the brand that I have, I don't have, I don't know why, but the Class A brand needles that I use, the top stitch needle works better for metallic thread than the metallic. I don't know why. Don't ask me. They're supposed to be the same. Everyone in the industry says, oh, both needles are really the same. They're just packaged different. But I find all these years I've been using the two different needles to be very different. They really are very different. They both can be used depending upon the density of your design and the material that you're using. So that's that. And then, talking about the Polydeco, look what I got. I got a box of the Polydeco threads here. So I can't wait to use these and see how they stitch out. This is, they're 40 weight. The metallic thread is a 30 weight. It's a 30 weight. Metallic thread is a 30 weight and the Polydeco is a 40 weight. So the my new my new candy canes. My new candy. I get to try my new candy out. All right, now we'll head over to the machine and get it loaded up, and you can watch me do a little bit of sewing and see the results. Okay, before we start sewing out, I want to show you something, guys. My client bought this machine. It's a PC6500 sewing and embroidery machine. And she called me, and she said, Hey, I saw all the painting you're doing with your machines, and I'd like to know if you could... Um, paint my machine and freshen it up I just bought it and it was it's like brand new the lady who owned it hardly used it and so she bought it my my client bought it I painted it for her and she told me take your time testing it out add the lights for me you know those overhead lights that you use and she said and really get it together for me and let me know when it's done and I'll pick it up so now I'm going to do embroidery of the Laurel Birch design in a 5x7. Uh, off camera, I re-edited it to a 5x7 and I'm sewing it out on this machine as you can see. And it sews beautiful. This is a 24 year old machine guys. 24 years old this machine is. And it was hardly used. So when I took it apart, all I had to do was oil it because it was a little bit dry. Oil it, grease it, and it runs like brand new. This is going to be a great machine for it. Just absolutely great. All right, here's a tip. When you're using totally stable, this is a fusible, and you would think the way that this is on the bolt, that the underneath would be the fusible side, but it's not. It's actually the top. This is the slick side, and the slick side is the side that goes down against your fabric, and you iron the back of it. So the side that feels a little like Teflon, that goes against the back of your fabric and then you iron from this side. So logically though, when I first, when I first started using this, when I was first introduced to it, I wasn't even thinking and I just automatically opened it up, 
you know, and I cut it and then I laid it down on the fabric. I went to iron and it's like ironing freezer paper on the wrong side. And I thought, oh, that's wrong. So the way you do it is you open it up like this, you cut it, and this is the side you iron. Okay, hope that tip helps you. So you don't mess up your iron. How many of you have taken interfacing for garments that you use? And you, you know, even though it's got the little white dots on it, you weren't thinking and you fuse it on your iron. If you haven't done that, <laughs> you will one day. And you only have to do it once to learn that lesson. All right, I decided to switch things up. I'm going to sew the sun and the moon on one of my other machines. And I'm going to change and do this horse on this machine. So let's do the horse and see how it looks, okay? And there's the, the Poly Deco in a neon color and the yellow. And that's going to be our first color that we're going to sew out. And let's just watch the process and embrace the dance. So here's a tip I want to share with all of you. Sometimes when you use a metallic thread and you have the jump thread cutting set on, the metallic thread can jump out of the needle after it's been cut. And I find this to be true on all my brand machines. It's not, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens frequently. So just to prevent some aggravation, shut the jump stitch trim icon, turn it off, so the metallic thread doesn't get cut every time it moves to another area. And you'll save yourself aggravation for having to re-thread it every time it cuts the thread. So I wanted to show you this design I sewed out prior. Come out beautiful. This was done on that same denim. Here's the back. Same layering technique. I love her designs. Here is one I did on a 5x7 frame. And when I place the floating stabilizer underneath, I didn't get it all the way, so I sliced a piece and added it to it. You can always do that, guys. You can always add more. And if you forget, stop, cut the thread, and slip a piece under there. And you're going to find that you will end up with pucker free. Or as my friend, who likes to be a little naughty, will say, mother pucker free embroidery. I thought about naming that title of this video, mother pucker free embroidery, but I thought, no, I better not. I better not. All right, so here is... And this is, you saw, I was doing this on that other machine. That was a machine that my client purchased. She got it used, and it was a great deal. And she asked me, she saw all my painting, and she said, will you paint my machine and do some detailing on it? 
I said, sure. And she goes, and then embroider on it and make sure everything's okay. And then she says, uh, when it's all done, I'll come over and get it then. I'm like, yeah. So she said, take your time. I'm in no hurry. And that machine is just like my PC6000, except it does embroidery. Um, and it doesn't do as many decorative stitches as the PC6000. But boy, that machine is 24 years old, guys. Did you know that? That PC6500 is 24 years old, approximately. I can't believe. Wow. That's unbelievable. All right, so here, see, it's much easier to take this uh, totally stable off. And it's so important, it's so important that you do these layers. And you'll have problem-free. It'll be problem-free removing the stabilizer and everything else. Okay? See how nice? And what is that? As my friend said, mother pucker free embroidery. <laughs> okay. I know you don't know my friend, but if you did, she's a hoot. Okay, so let's get this one out. This was done on stretch denim. And my other friend gave me this material. She gave me this material because she was having issues sewing different things. And she said, here, you need some, she says, you want some fabric for your sewing classes to practice on? I said, sure. I'll never say no to donations for my sewing class. Especially today, it's much harder for companies today to donate uh, product like they used to years ago. Before the housing market crashed, the economy was much better, and there were more sewers, and people were going to sewing machine dealers to take lessons and to buy from there. Now, since the internet exploded, people are just staying home. So, and the industry completely has changed a lot. So, anyway, that's a, that's a tale of another story. Okay, so let's go here. All right, so that was the floater underneath I just tore off. Now here's the sticky back, and then here is the iron-on totally stable. See how nice it'll, come, it'll all come off really nice. If this totally stable was on to the, just the fabric by itself, you might get that totally stable stuck on the back of this fabric. That's happened to me when I was doing my dust covers and I thought something was really terribly wrong. And then I learned about the layering process on my own. I discovered if I layer, not only will it prevent puckering, but it'll also prevent the sticky back from sticking on certain fabrics and not coming off. So use that tip, everyone, please. It'll really help you. See how sticky that is? That's really sticky. And sometimes, and it doesn't bother you, as you saw, there's no problem with it when you're embroidering because it's made for embroidery. But on some delicate fabrics or other fabrics, it'll stick and it won't come off. So that's why the layering process is so much better to do. There's so much more success that way. Okay, now here we go. Now I'm going to take off the totally stable. See how nice that iron's on when you iron it on properly? I have never been to a sulky class on embroidery or their, or their threads. I learned how to do and work with all this myself, especially with the metallic threads. Now, the only thing about the metallic threads, when I wrote my book, Pillows, uh, one of the gals at Sulky gave me some suggestions for metallic threads, and uh, then I created my own devices and had lots of success with metallic threads. I love using metallic threads. I love that extra little bling. All right, let's go here. And this is the fab, the stabilizer you want to use when you're doing pillows or doing towels. See how nice that comes off? Look at that. Now you can see the back. You can see the back. It's all pucker free. Mother pucker free. Here's the front. Look at that. And that's a that's a dense design, guys. And I I edited the program for this material. And that's how heavily uh, dense this design is from the digitizing because her 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 Laurel Birch designs have multiple layers of color. All right. There's you know it goes down deep. You know, you know like a rock when you dig deep into the earth and you see all the different color layers of a of stone and everything. That's kind of like her art. Her art she builds color upon color upon color. 
and then that's how it gets to be such dense design. So it's oh so imperative that you use your software, and your brilliance does a great job uh, of telling you, of asking you what fabrics you're using. And then you can also, if you do a test and see it's still too much, like I did a medium denim. Remember when I did this? I set up for a medium denim. I could probably, or a medium uh, poly cotton. I probably could have done light or a light canvas. I could have even chose can. What, what did I use? You guys remember, what did I choose? Canvas or poly cotton? I think I used poly cotton. And I, I remember I was choosing medium. I could have done light, which would have made it even better. So this is stuff you learn along the way, but it's important to know these are the things that a lot of newbies don't know and understand. And now that you know and understand, you'll know how to troubleshoot. So see how nice that is? So let's go over a few things again. Layering. Layering. So important to layer when you're... It's like when you're living up north and you're dressing for the cold weather. You layer. You layer your garments. That's why it's here when you get inside and it's too warm inside, you could take off a sweater or this and that. So remember, the first thing you do is you use your totally stable to iron on to the back of the fabric. And then you're going to hoop in the hoop, you're going to hoop the Sulky Sticky Plus. This gets hooped in the hoop. Okay? Now, like I mentioned earlier, printed side up in the hoop. Okay? The slick side that feels like Teflon, that's the side that goes to the back of your fabric. And in this bolt that I buy, um, this bolt has a slick side up, so it's going to be like this. You iron it to the back of the fabric. You see that? So, to all the veterans out there, they're thinking like, well, yeah, I already know that. Well, you know, I'm dedicating this to the newbies, because I see a lot of newbies uh, asking me a lot of questions. And I can't answer all the questions. So, I'm trying to catch up doing videos to help all the newbies to understand. So the veterans out there, you've been doing this for a while, you already know this stuff, and just, you know, please um, give the newbies an opportunity to learn. Okay, until my next video, give it a try, practice, save your money, buy some software so you can have success with uh, um, your density, and you know, this is the time, guys. This is the time in our industry that some of these sewing machines, like I just mentioned, the one I just showed you and that I, I'm fixing up for my client, that machine's 24 years old. She got it for pennies. She got it for pennies compared to what it costs brand new. You find some grandma that hardly used her sewing machines and she's selling them now, you're going to get good deals. You're going to get really good deals and these machines are very well taken care of because they were hardly used. I talked about that before. So that machine she got, beautiful machine. Oh my God, I was so jealous when I was done painting it and drawing it. I'm like, oh my gosh. Now, as you see also, here's another tip for you to all remember. As you see, I enlarge the designs, okay? The bigger the design you make for your bigger hoop, the slower it's going to embroider. I'm telling you, it does it on all my machines. The, they do not go like even though this machine says I think it does a thousand fifty stitches a minute it didn't and the 24 year old sewing machine that you were seeing it was almost sewing just as slow as this modern machine did so it, when you have bigger designs and it's got more stitching it goes slower on its own so don't think that you messed up or something you did wrong so now I know that machine that's 24 years old does up to 600 stitches per minute now, you know that embroidery machine you guys are buying from Walmart that only does a 4x4 hoop? I think that's only 300 or 350 stitches per minute, okay? I called brother and asked their people on the phone how many stitches per minute does the embroidery side do, and nobody knew. Asked to speak to a supervisor. She didn't know. They said he'd get back to me. They didn't get back to me. So I looked at the, the baby lock equivalent of that machine and the baby lock equivalent listed on their page that it did like 300 or I think it's 350 stitches per minute. So I tell you, and my Janome does 850 stitches a minute. And an 850 stitches per minute is a really good speed. It really is. Now, my friend Mindy just bought her, grant, her, her son... Uh, brother 3700D uh, 
sewing an embroidery machine for Christmas last year, and we were watching it sew, and it said 850 stitches per minute, and that thing was going fast. That thing was really moving fast. So they must have improved some technology and the software or something, because, boy, let me tell you something, that thing was going, that thing was really moving. All right, so my next one, you guys take care. I could talk and give you tips and give you stories all day long. You know I can. All right, like, subscribe, please share. Um, let's get going on this. Let's build this channel and do some more tutorials and really get the education out there for all of you, okay? Let's build this channel and make it bigger. So share these videos with everybody and um, get everybody to subscribe and like it and we'll be able to grow and I'll be able to do more tutorials for you all. Okay, take care. Love you. Bye.